Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss comparing measures of center. So, and by that, we mean the mean or the median. Which should you choose? So in, a, in previous videos, we've already discussed this uh, to some degree, uh, but we're going to go through and, and we're going to review it here at the beginning first, and then we'll add some more information uh, in the rest of the video. All right, so the shape of the distribution is an important element. All right, and, and by that, if we have a unimodal symmetric distribution, then often we're, we're going to think about the mean. And if we have a skewed distribution, then typically we use the median. But what if we were to go through and use the median on a unimodal symmetric distribution or use the mean on a skewed distribution? Uh, you know, what will happen? Okay, so if you go through and have a unimodal symmetric distribution, the, medi the median actually gives you a similar result to the mean. Why would that be? All right. Um, so if you think about a, what the median does, the median gives you the middle, the, 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 uh, the very center of the distribution, the middle of the distribution. Uh, center is not a good word because we're, uh, center has, has different ideas and statistics, uh, but it gives you the middle element in the distribution. And if you have a unimodal symmetric distribution, then the mean is going to be in the middle and the median is going to be in the middle. They're both going to be in the middle. And so that's how you, that's why you end up getting a similar result. Whereas if you go through and calculate the mean on a skewed distribution, then the result is typically in the direct is going to be shifted in the direction of the skew. From the median. So what does that mean? Um, it means that if you were to go through and calculate both the mean and the median on a right skewed distribution, then the mean is going to be to the right of the median. And on a left skewed distribution, uh, it would be to the left, right?
Oops. All right, so why would that be? Let's take a look at a graph. Let's take a look at a graph here. All right, so what we've got is we've got a skewed distribution. What this distribution is, it's the length of songs in seconds on an MP3 player that one of the authors of the textbook we're using uh, put together. And so if you go through and calculate it, the mean is at 250 seconds. So if we actually have the data, that's what we'd get. And the median is at 226 seconds. So why would the mean end up to the right of the median? So this is a right skewed distribution. Uh, why would the mean end up to the right? Uh, so the idea is that the mean is finding the balancing point. The median is finding the middle, all right? So if you just take the middle element, if you went through and just ordered these, uh, that doesn't say exactly how many songs there are, um, but if you just were to, to go through and order them, the middle is, it looks like it's right about, right about there, right about 220, 226 seconds. Um, the middle element is just, you're just counting. And so like this, this, uh, this element that's at the far right, this observation that's at the far right, um, it only just counts for one element. Um, and so the same thing for the, each one of these only counts one time as you're going through and you're finding the center. But when you're finding the balancing point, when you have one or two um, observations that are, far, that are far to the right of the rest, and these are far away from the rest, right? The rest are all down here, uh, you know, looks like between zero and 400 seconds. That's where most of the observations are. These are, these are quite far to the right. To get the balancing point, you need what the, what that does is it is it pulls the the mean to the right. Um, it's got to it's got to pull it in this direction. It's got to move it in this direction so that so that the balance so that the balance is offset by this. So you have to have more stuff on one side. You have to have more stuff to the left to offset how far this is to the right. So if you think about it like a teeter totter. Um, and you were to go through and you have your, you know, you, you have, you've got uh, your fulcrum and you've got your teeter-totter. Uh, if you have a really long teeter-totter and let's say you have, you know, something at the far end of it, uh, then you need to have a whole bunch of stuff here to offset that that's at the far right of it. Um, that's just the way that teeter-totters work, uh, is that one thing that's really far to the right needs to be offset by a bunch of things that are relatively close to the fulcrum like that. And so um, that's just physics. Uh, you could go and do an experiment at the, um, you, know, you could go in, in, and, uh, and do an experiment to check that out if you'd like. Uh, so, but anyway, that's how it works. And so that's why the mean, when you go through and calculate a mean for a skewed distribution, the, the mean is, is pulled in the direction of the skew because the direction of the skew is the direction where you have things that are far from the center uh, that are you know they're, that are offsetting the you know the rest of the distribution okay um, and so the same thing would be true if we had a left skewed distribution all right so uh, that's uh, so that's mean and median um, when it comes to skew and uh, and and, the, and unimodal symmetric distribution, so the shape. Uh, let's talk about outliers. So we also have kind of discussed this briefly in other videos, but you know, just for completeness, it's important to note that a single outlier can significantly change the mean.
Meanwhile, the median is quite robust. A single outlier just counts for one thing when it comes to finding the center. Uh, and so it doesn't tend to affect the median very much. Okay, let's take a look at a couple examples. All right, so our first example here is the, some information was collected on the height of some children in a class. All right, so we had 48, 48, these are in inches, 53, 53 and a half, so on. Um, and then originally, the, the last child here was 71 inches. So originally it had 71 inches. Um, that's the top distribution. And then just for just to illustrate how big, a, how big an effect the outliers have, uh, what we did is we went through, well, we, 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 I, I didn't do this, the, the authors did. Uh, what they did is they went through and replaced the tallest child, which was 71 inches, uh, with Shaq, with Shaquille O'Neal's height, which is 85 inches. And so the point is to show the difference between these two. So uh, the original distribution with the 71 inch child had a, a mean of 56.2 inches. Meanwhile, the distribution with Shaq had a mean at 57.9 inches. And so we can see here the effect. So, and just to be clear here, 71 inches compared to the rest of the children that's in the distribution, the, the original child with, who was 71 inches was already an outlier. Uh, by going through and replacing it with replacing that child with Shaq, uh, the outlier become, became even more extreme. But we can see the mean changes significantly. It moves by 1.7 inches by just having this single outlier. So it moves from where this little uh, red triangle is, to, you know, from this triangle, from that spot to that spot. So it, it, it shifts to the right by a fairly significant amount relative to the distribution. So I, I, you know, I realize if you kind of take a look at these and you just kind of sit back, maybe the red triangle doesn't, doesn't look like it shifts that much, but consider where all of the data is except for the, you know, the, the, either the 71 or the 85 inch outlier. So the mean really should be kind of right on top of these three. That's really the middle, right? So these kind of these two and these two are kind of offset. So it should be like right here in the middle. And you can see that's, that's a significant shift if you just kind of ignore everything that occurs to the right of, you know, the, of the, actually, let me just actually draw a line. If you ignore everything that kind of draw to the right of 65 inches, that's a pretty significant shift relative to, to that distance, relative to where most of the distribution is. Uh, but meanwhile, if you go through and calculate the median, the median for the top distribution is 53.75 inches, and the median for the bottom distribution is 53.7. So you can see in both cases, very resistant to either the 71 inch outlier or the Shaq's 85 inch outlier. All right, and so that is an important thing to know about outliers is that if you have outliers, then the median is frequently going to end up doing a better job you know, when it comes to studying the data. You can still go through and use the, the mean if you want to, to if you want to study the data and, and have a, a reasonable estimate of center. However, the thing that you have to consider is removing the outliers in that case. Um, and so that's something to be to, to be taken very seriously because you're changing the data by going through and doing that. Uh, but it is an option to go through and remove the outliers, and then you could still use the mean. Why would you want to use the mean? I, I meant to cover this actually when we were going over the, the first page. If the median uh, gives you a similar result to the mean on a unimodal distribution, and the median does a better job than the mean on a skewed distribution, then doesn't it seem like the median is just all around better than the mean? 
not so. Uh, and the reason is the empirical rule. So I did an entire video on this. Um, the, the, the ability to go through and identify where a distribution is, you know, where elements are, are in the distribution using the empirical rule is incredibly powerful. Um, it's, it's, it's just super valuable. Uh, so if you can, you do want to use the mean and the standard deviation and be able to use the empirical rule. It's just that you're not always going to be able to. Uh, you're not going to be able to if you have a skewed distribution. You're not going to be able to if you have significant outliers where you can't go through and remove elements. Um, and so that is just something to, to, to know is that you do want to use the mean because you want to be able to calculate the standard deviation and use the empirical rule. It's just that frequently you can't. And so because of that, it's important to be aware of it um, and, uh, you know, and, and so you know, know, know when that, that situation comes up. All right, let's look at another example. I think that's a really good job of illustrating. All right, so this data contains salaries for five employees and their boss at a fast food uh, restaurant. Um, so the so what we've gone what, what we again. Um, what the authors have gone through and done is they've calculated the median and the mean. So what you've got is you've got five people making $16,000 a year. You've got one making $100,000 a year. All right. So, and the whole point of this is, you know, that this, uh, this lecture is, is titled comparing measures of center. So it's all about where is, you know, what's the center of the data or uh, what's the typical value. So if someone were to come to you and ask you, what does the typical employee make at the fast food restaurant? What's the typical person? What's normal um, at the restaurant? Would you say normal is 16,000 when there's five people making 16,000 uh, and one making 100? Or would you say that normal is 30,000? All right. Um, and so you know, that's something to be con something to consider. So the thing that's weird about using normal as 30,000 is that just about all of the employees are well to the left of that, well below that. So it's kind of an odd number to give if that, if that was your answer. So what's, what's the normal amount that you'd make if you worked at the restaurant? If you said the normal person makes 30,000 uh, works at the restaurant, that's a little odd when nearly everyone at the fast food restaurant makes significantly less than that. Okay. And so this is an example of where the mean does not do a good job because of, because of an outlier. Uh, so what you could do if you really wanted to use the mean here is you could take the manager and you could throw the manager out um, and then calculate the mean without the manager in. And that would be a sensible thing to do. The manager clearly makes a much different salary than the rest. Um, and, so, um, and so really should they be included in the rest when it comes to calculating the the you know the typical value or the or the center. Meanwhile, the median, as you could see, is very resistant to the manager's hundred thousand dollar outlier. It basically completely ignores it, uh, and it still gives you sixteen thousand. Okay, so just an important to understand uh, when you go through and you use the median and the mean. You know what type of outcome you get. The mean is about balance. If you go ahead and you have your teeter totter and you've got 100,000 way, 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 way over to the right here, it's going to pull the mean away from all of the rest of the data. Um, and so that's a problem if you want your, if you want your measure of center, if you want your typical value, if you want, if you want to answer the question, what's normal and get a good, and get a good answer, an answer that makes sense, uh, then you need to be aware, uh, you know, that, that the mean does that. All right, uh, next. So let's talk about modes. So let's say you're going through and you're studying the data and you get multiple modes. What should you do? What should you do with multiple modes? Uh, in general, what you want to try and do is you want to try and separate the groups 
you want you want to try and determine whether there are two groups or, or more two or more groups in the data that you could go through and separate So I think we've already we've also gone through this example in another video, but just to kind of reiterate, reiterate it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this distribution here. So here, what we've got is we have you know, since you're going through and you're, you're collecting data. This is on uh, times that marathon runners have run when they went through and did a marathon. And if you go through and take a look at the data, you could see. It's clearly bimodal. We have multiple modes. So there's that's one mode, that's another mode. And so if you're studying this data and you're thinking about, all right, well, where's the center of this data? Uh, rather than go through and try and find the center where, with these multiple modes, um, it's typically help, more helpful to try and separate the data first. Try and go through and break, uh, break up the data into groups. And so if you look at what the data contains, what you'll find is you'll find the data contains a mix of both amateur and Olympic athletes that ran the marathon. And so if you sit down and you think about that for a few minutes, should Olympic athletes and amateurs be studied together in one data set? Maybe not. Uh, maybe it would make more sense to separate them. All right, and so if you go through and do that, uh, what we can see is that the two do break up into groups that, that make a little bit more sense uh, when you see them separated. So the amateur group, it has this um, right skew to it, uh, but you do get a single mode. Um, and then the Olympic athletes, uh, it looks like they're done on the same, uh, the same um, x-axis. Uh, you know, but if you were to go through and kind of zoom in so that it's not on the same x axis, the thing that you'd find is that this actually looks kind of symmetric, right? If you were to zoom in on it, you do have a couple outliers here, but they're not, I mean, a couple, a little bit of a skew here, but it's not terribly strong. You really, you, you really could study this maybe, you know, using, um, using the mean um, and the, you know, unimodal symmetric method, whereas here with this right skew, you'd clearly have to go through and use the median. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that if you take the data here and you break it apart, suddenly it's a lot easier to wrap your head around, around it and you know what to do with it. Okay, and so that's usually going to be your strategy is to go through and try and break it apart, um, rather than go through and use uh, the mean or the median on this, on this combined um, distribution. All right, and then finally, the last thing that we're going to talk about um, is what to do when you're comparing groups. So let's say you're comparing two groups. If they both are unimodal and symmetric, then you could use the mean. If they both are skewed, then you could use the median. And then what if there's a mix? Let's, let's just write that down first. So, so uh, if both are unimodal slash symmetric, then we can use the mean. If both are skewed, then I think it makes sense to use the median. 
What if there's a mix? Well, if we think about this, the median does an okay job on a unimodal symmetric distribution. It's not quite as awesome as the mean is because we use our ability to use the empirical rule, but the measure of center gives us a similar outcome. The median and the mean are similar for unimodal and symmetric distributions. Uh, meanwhile, the mean does an awful job on skewed distribution. Let's just be honest. It does a bad job. It's not a good method. I mean, we just kind of covered this with the manager, the case with the manager. The mean is just is 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 just very flawed when it comes to skewed distributions. And so if you think about the relative value of those, the median does okay if it's on a unimodal symmetric. The mean is awful on skewed. Um, I think it's kind of obvious then the the best the the best case out of those would be to go through and use the median. All right, and I think I've got an image for that too. So taking the example that we just finished where we had one distribution was skewed and the other one was it's fairly unimodal uh, and sorry, fairly symmetric. I mean, it's definitely unimodal, but uh, <clears throat> if we we're going to compare the two, we would want to use the median on both because one of them is skewed. And if we do that, the median amount of time in minutes to complete the marathon amongst amateurs was 266 minutes. And for the Olympic athletes, it was 155. Okay, and so we can cl clearly see the, the difference between them. If we'd used the mean, the mean would have worked. The mean would have worked fine on this one, and the mean would have given us something not very useful uh, for this one. And so we would have ended up with a flawed result if we had done that. Okay, so uh, hopefully that, uh, that answers some of your questions on comparing measures of center. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time.